Hey, welcome to the A-Level Biology uh, Taster Session. My name is Mrs. Scott Halsey. I'm one of the A-Level Biology teachers. My identical twin is the other A-Level Biology teacher, so I'm sure you'll see her in due course. It's really strange for me delivering the, the taster in this way. A really important feature of the taster sessions every year is having the year 12 students with us because they are the ones that can really tell you what this course is like as a student. So I've got some feedback from them and I will be sharing that with you as we go through this session. The purpose of the session, I want to give you a brief overview of the subject. Clearly, we need to talk about the grade requirements. And it's important that you are absolutely sure about wanting to study this subject. It is a very, very complex subject. And, I, and I, I, I must talk to you about that. We'll have a very short um, introduction to one of the topics and I will clarify the summer milestones for you as well. The most important question that you need to ask yourselves, and I'm going to come back to again and again throughout this presentation, is why? Why do you want to study A-level biology? You need to know your why. Something has got to be a driver for you with this subject. It is a complex subject. It is challenging. It's going to require a lot of your time. So there's got to be a really strong motivator and driver, not just, well, I liked it at GCSE. So I asked my A-level, current A-level biology students why they chose A-level biology. What was their driver? What was their why? You can see from the answers that we've got here in front of us that some of them said it was because they enjoyed it at GCSE. And that is an important reason for some of you. But there needs to be a bit more. You'll see that a number, and in fact, most of the responses that I've got talk about the fact that this is a key, important ingredient in driving their future career. They need the A-level biology subject. They need to be successful in it and therefore they will be motivated by it. So it's really important that you think about your why, not just that you liked it at GCSE, there needs to be a bit more to it than that. What does it getting a grade in this course mean to you and what will it mean for your future? So here's some opportunity for you to take some thinking time. This is something I use a lot in my lessons. I like you to stop and really force yourself to think. Some of you will have a completely blank mind at first, but I want you to push through that and really think about the best answer you can give to this question. Which part of biology that you've studied so far have you enjoyed? Pause the video, take some thinking time. Okay, so at this point, I usually would take some feedback from you to get a really good understanding about which parts of GCSE biology you are confident in, you enjoyed it, and it stuck with you. And perhaps even more importantly, talk about the areas that you struggled with. And I would strongly recommend that you sit down and start looking back over the whole biology specification now. Look at the things you struggled with and treat those as the priority because they will all be relevant to your A-level study. On the screen in front of you, you can see the year one topics. And it's really important to stress that these form the fundamental biological principles on which your entire A-level is built. You have got to, from the outset, be committed to developing long-term, strong understanding of these topics. Biological molecules, nucleic acids, cell structure and exchange are just crucial and they come into nearly every single topic as we move forward to the full A-level. In year two, as I've said, we will build on this where we look at more complex areas of study, response to stimuli and coordination, as well as looking at inheritance in greater detail, linking that to evolution, um, looking at ecosystems, and then finally, the gene expression, the DNA technology section. There are links throughout this course, so it is really important you stay on top of your learning throughout. There are also 12 required practicals. Uh, everybody has to do them. And these are to develop practical skills, but they also really help to embed the knowledge and deepen the understanding of 
the topics that you're learning. You need to know now that 10% of your exam papers are mathematical skills. So if this is something that you struggle with. It's important you, that this is part of your consideration before you opt for A-level biology. 10% of marks on all papers are mathematical skill based. There is a strong synoptic element. So you may be asked questions in the exam paper that bring together topics from all over the specification. So we've got to make those links as we go through. So I asked my students what they enjoy about the course currently. You can see the content, very interesting. Of course, I'm gonna agree because it's my passion, but the students enjoy the practical elements of the course. They find it very engaging. You do learn about biology at a very high level of detail. We've got to prepare you for university study. Builds on your knowledge from GCSE, little compliment for the teachers there, which I were very happy to take. And again, the teachers make it easier and more enjoyable. I hope we do. We try very hard to make that work. And it's important that you know that if you're struggling at any point, that we will help you. That's what we're there for. You'll find bits challenging. You have to talk to us so we can support you through that. And I really like this one at the end. I enjoy learning about the biological world in terms of the environment, animals, diseases, our body, etc. It makes you feel much more knowledgeable about the world and ourselves, allowing you to become a better person in some ways. For example, by playing a part to protect wildlife from becoming extinct. We do look at conservation as an important part of the course. And you can see whoever gave me this answer, and it was anonymous, whoever gave me this answer, they've got a real passion for this subject and they are driven to make a difference in the world as a result of their learning. There are three exam papers when you do the full A-level course. Paper one looks at the first top four topics, topics one to four, they're the ones you study in year one. It's important you take a look at the distribution of marks, 91 marks, it counts for 35% of the A-level and it's a mixture of short and long answer questions. There are 15 marks dedicated to extended response questions. Paper two takes topics five to eight. The written exam, as you can see, is also two hours. And again, similar structure to the paper, but this time the last 15 marks are dedicated to a comprehension question. Paper three is perhaps the most complex. It deals with content from anywhere across the whole specification. But in this paper, you will see the structure is different. There are 38 marks for structured questions, including practical techniques. So the 12 required practicals I was talking about, you are assessed on those throughout these papers. There is a critical analysis question. I've, we've got to help you to become really good critical scientists. And then there is a 25 mark essay. Before taking on this subject, I would strongly recommend that you go online and take a look at some A-level papers. Now we, study the AQA specification, but you can have a look at any. It's important that you compare them to your GCSE papers. It's important that you think about the level of complexity and think about whether this is something that you feel you want to strive for. Think about how they're different to GCSE. Think about the skills you're going to need to develop and what you think it's going to take to reach those higher grades. You need to be aware of the challenge of the exams from the outset so that you are driven to build those skills. I asked my current year 12s what they thought the toughest thing about the A-level course actually is. And of course, you can see references here to the volume of the content, the amount of content, the depth of the content. There is a lot of new stuff to learn. There is a huge amount of terminology. You notice some references here to the workload. If you're not fully mentally and physically invested in the course, it's an enormous challenge. Keeping up with things, if it's not something you enjoy and love, is really, really hard. And there are also references here to the kinds of exam questions. So bear this in mind. So let's give you a little idea about what the content is actually like and how it compares to GCSE. 
I'd like you to get a piece of paper or a piece of card. I'd like you to pause the video for two minutes and challenge yourself to draw and label an animal cell and a plant cell as you've learned for GCSE. Can you do this from memory, please? No books, no mobile phones. Just give yourself the challenge and humour me by sitting and drawing an animal and a plant cell. Pause now. So how did you do? Well, I've got some dots on the screen here already. They're wrong, in the wrong order of the animation, but they are the ribosomes. Hopefully you've got a cell membrane in there. So something that is holding the cell contents together and it's labeled as such. You should have in the middle a nucleus. It's usually in the middle anyway, but it can be anywhere in the cell. Really important, holding the genetic information. You hopefully will have some sausage shaped organelles known as mitochondria and you should know their function. And of course the cytoplasm, the jelly like substance, which actually is way more complex than we give it credit for at GCSE. Usually at this point I wander around and I see all sorts of fried egg looking structures drawn on your paper. I don't think any of you had something that looked like oh. this. Now this is where we get to at A level. The complexity increases dramatically and you will see that actually there is so much more to a cell than you learn at GCSE. Your plant, oh there's another example uh, of an animal cell more of a 3D structure now and the nucleus is open here giving us greater detail about the structures within the nucleus and within the mitochondria actually. Your plant cells and again I would have looked at the ones that you've drawn and they usually are nice rectangles and you've remembered to put in a cell wall and you've remembered a vacuole and you've remembered some chloroplasts. At A level we need to go into this in far more detail as you can see in front of you here. We need to look inside that chloroplast and have a look at these strange stacks of what look like little pound, tiny green pound coins. What are they? What do they do? Why are they there? Why is the structure the way that it is? So you can see this hopefully shows you the step up from GCSE and you'll find that this continues across all of the topics that we study. So as I've said, coming back to the specification, cell structure, this is just one small aspect of the year one study, but we've got to understand it in that level of detail before we can build on your understanding of the specialized cells that are involved in, for example, nervous coordination, homeostasis, and so on. Your milestones, you have been set the milestones and they should have been emailed to you. If you haven't, this is available on our website in the form of the milestone card. And the biology one, there's quite a bit of detail in the biology milestone. And the reason for this is I want you to have a really, really good understanding about what you're getting into. The level of independent study required at A-level jumps significantly. You will be expected to consolidate your learning after every single lesson. That is what we know allows for success. The students that don't do that fall behind very, very quickly and struggle. So I've got to get you into good habits from the outset. There is a transition guide that you're provided with and I would, I, I, what I would like you to do please is complete all of the activities in the booklet and we'll finalize the deadline for that uh, when you've returned to school. If you come across something that's really challenging, I'd really like to see if you can push through that Go back to your learning notes, go back to your, to, to, uh, you can look at your revision websites, etc. And see if you can tackle those activities with confidence. Fill in the gaps in your learning and demonstrate that you're a good independent learner. Task two, I would again strongly require you to get a copy of this book. It's called Head Start to A-Level Biology and it's really, really good. And it, the purpose of it is to help bridge the gap between GCSE and A-level. And I need you to study the information in this booklet because in September when I see you, I will be assessing how confident you are in your GCSE knowledge. And are you ready to make that transition to A-level? You can see our contact details also on this slide. I'm Mrs. Scott Halsey. Um, Mrs. Kennedy is the other A-level branch teacher. We happen to be identical twins.
This is the textbook that if you would like to make a purchase, please do if you are absolutely certain that A-level biology is for you. This is the book that we use. And finally, just remember that if you want to get onto the A-level biology course, the minimum entrance grade is a grade five. It's so important that you realise that if you come in on grade five, you're, you've got a lot of work that you're going to have to do independently to get your GCSE knowledge up to a higher standard so that we can build on that at A level. Please work on that through the summer. You don't know your grades yet, nobody does, but continue to work and consolidate in your GCSE biology knowledge so that it's absolutely sharp when you join the course in September. Ultimately, this course has got to mean something to you. It's got to be important in your future. It's got to be relevant to the study that you want to go on to. Otherwise, it is very difficult to motivate yourself to do a course like this. And finally, I asked the current year 12s what advice they would give someone in your position trying to make this decision about whether biology is for you. This was completely anonymous, so I don't know who said this, but I love this piece of advice here. Do not get intimidated by the difficulty of the course. If you love biology, if you are passionate about this subject, then absolutely this will be your motivator. Regardless of how hard it gets, it will push you through and drive you to continue to work at it, even when the going gets tough. Be prepared to work hard. You have to in A-level biology. There's no getting away from it. It will be a weekly feature of your life for two years. Do your own research. You're signing up for two years of hard graft on this course. Make sure you're completely up for it. I've tried to tell you all I can about the course today in the 10, 15 minutes that I've had, but do your own research too. This is really important. I think this is fantastic advice. Your GCSE knowledge, whatever grade you get, whatever you're given by Ofqual and the government this summer, that is old news as far as I'm concerned. That is where you were 20th of March. What I need to be confident of is the fact that your GCSE knowledge is secure. So I would strongly recommend that you work hard on deepening your knowledge and understanding of GCSE biology throughout the summer. Make sure you're ready to build on that. If you've got dodgy foundations, it's very, very hard for, for you to build on that in September. These two go together for me. Uh, great advice here. You're going to need to consolidate your notes after every lesson weekly. The students that do this are really su successful. Those that don't fall very, very behind. It is not possible to consolidate and revise all of your notes just before an exam. It simply doesn't work with the course of this complexity. So getting into very good learning habits is crucial. And finally, best bit of advice, go for it. This is really the mindset that we need. You need to be positive. You need to be determined, resilient and focused. It's a tough A level, but if you've got the passion and drive to make this work for you, it's one amazing qualification for you to take forward into the rest of your life. Good luck.